All right. Hello. How are you? How are we doing? Oh, I've got a fan here. Is, is, can you hear that fan noise? Can can everybody hear the fan noise or not? What's that at the back? Uh, and a bit, a bit, oh, I was getting a bit sweaty, so I put a fan on, but then it's just blasting in my face, and we don't want to hear that. No, well, I suppose that's better than the traffic noise if you had the window open, and it's... I'm just going to get sweaty and pass out after 20 minutes, maybe, so you may have to carry on without me. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I've got some good stories to tell. Have you? I've got information about... Uh, I found some information about somebody, a really interesting person in history. No, so not someone we know. You might know him. Not a person, not like a friend or anything, but you might know this famous person. Maybe a famous person in history. Possibly. Maybe not. So that's one thing on the agenda today then, because I think what people normally do when they do a podcast like this, two people, they kind right. of... They, they plan their podcast out. They'll perhaps talk a few days before about what they're going to talk about, the structure of it, who's going yeah. to say what, what jokes they've got, what stories. Um, we, don't, we don't do that, do we? Do you think that's why others are successful and ours aren't? Possibly. Could be a reason. But I think this is going to revolutionise the way that podcasts are made. Um, people sure. soon are going to start to copy the, the way we do it, which is basically have the podcast meeting during the podcast. <laughs> the old, that would approach it still so it sounds yeah. like yeah one of one on the agenda today is you talking about someone in history which sounds sounds fascinating we've got no guest with us this week uh and hopefully the audio won't be as fuzzy as last week yeah um Trying we've got new two te- new, new technique here we were we've gone back to old technique again today haven't we kind of yeah yeah but slightly new technique within the old technique as well kind of kind of Kind of. Slightly improved microphone microphone setup. Um, we've got two songs still today for the um, what what is now known as the song off. Yep, definitely, definitely. And there was a good uh, worthy winner last time because it was my choice. If you mm-hmm. uh, remember rightly, do you remember that? Yeah, who, who chose <laughs> the best one? So <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go straight in with that then about last week's winner winner of the song off. Um, so we had three entries last time. We had My Choice, which was Bad Bangs, all the way from Melbourne in Australia, which was a lovely surfy kind of song. Very chilled out. We enjoyed that. Good song. And we had Scott from Horn and Hoof Records up in Manchester, who chose a song which you're going to say now while I talk like this. His song was Hummer. by a band called Hummer. Hummer, which was an acoustic song that we liked as well. Good harmonies on that. Yep, very good. But the winner, good the winner was your your next door neighbours, wasn't it? <laughs> My vet. <laughs> <laughs> it was "Eat Your Own Head" with uh, Portuguese, and what a song that is! What a band! That was one hell of a song. It's taken me a week to get my head around it because it was so so impressive. Um, so no, they they were the. Um, the 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 worthy winners, I think, certainly from my opinion, um, from the from the song, I, I I loved all three songs, but I think if I had to pick a favourite, that that would have been my favourite. So, well done to them, and I hope they enjoy the success that comes from being the winner of the song off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's high in their uh, kind of uh, list of achievements. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. So we've got. Two more songs of that today. Um, I've got an exciting new feature which will last for one week um, and we'll never do it again called uh, Norfolk's Youngest Butcher, which nice. which, which is a nice feature. Um, I would say, yeah. I would say, just before you carry on, that with the name Norfolk's Youngest Butcher, that can only really be, <laughs> you say it's only going to last one week, it can only last one week, I would have thought. He's, well, it's, <laughs> there's literally only there's only going the, to be one Norfolk Youngest Butcher, surely. The, the, well, the twist here is it's, it's nothing about Norfolk's Youngest Butcher. Um, oh, I've just used the title Norfolk's Norfolk's Youngest Butcher for the, for the the feature for the for the title of the feature. So okay. already there, I've created intrigue and mystery. You have mm. around the new feature. Um, what, what, let's, go, let's, let's have a look back over the last week first, then. What, what has been going on in the world that's irritated the hell out of us? Because um, it's more likely that stuff have irritated the hell out of us rather than sitting here going, what, what, what really good stuff's happened for the last week? Yeah, well, what, what? <laughs> I've gone off the whole country, to be honest. I'm, uh, I want, I'm, I'm looking a... at moving to a different country. 
That's quite significant. I, I went off seeded bread this week and you've um I've gone, gone off England. Hogs. Yeah. Gone off England. Why why have you gone off England? What's it done to you? Well, it's not not to me necessarily, but it's um it's it's the football, isn't it? It's the football. Mm-hmm. It's it was gutted. We we didn't win, but it's football. It doesn't really matter mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Somebody said of all the most import unimportant things, it is the most important thing. But mm-hmm. it ultimately is unimportant to the average person. Yet people who are supporting all of these players throughout the whole tournament, as soon as they miss a few penalties, everybody suddenly reverts to racist and mm-hmm. yob kind of status. It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. And there's, uh, uh, yeah, I see. That it's a minority in the country, but it's a it's a very vocal, strong minority, and I hate it. Hate it absolutely. Really, really hate it. So <sighs> it has been utterly hideous. I mean, we we are both absolutely huge football fans. We mm-hmm. we we love watching these blokes kick around ball uh, around yeah. a pitch. We love when new kits come out. We love looking at facts and statistics and stadiums. Um, love all of that stuff that, that's what we absolutely love and, and supporting them we both love absolutely love Norwich and feel that connection with a group of Norwich fans yeah. and we want to feel that with the England team as well how cool for the whole country to be supporting the one thing that we love as well which yeah. at times through this tournament it's felt like that hasn't it it's felt like everyone is getting behind the, getting behind the boys it's really yeah. good it's really fun and, and really really good miss the penalties on, on Sunday night yeah, it was it was disappointing. That's a shame, but they've they've got to the final. We've not seen that in our lifetimes. So it's a real step forwards. You wake up Monday morning and it's just like fuck off. Yeah, it's unbelievable, disgusting. unbelievably disgusting. And I think whereas when you, when you support your club, the majority certainly at Norwich, um, I think ninety nine point nine percent are genuine football fans. But most yeah. clubs up and down down the country, even when you're talking Man City, Man United, Liverpool, the majority of people in that ground are there to see and support through thick and thin their team. You yeah. get a group of England people in a stadium to watch England football, 99.9%. It's not that kind of number, is it? There are, there are a large number of people in there who have gone with the mates, with the lads, with cans of beer to swear at Italy and boo the national anthem of Italy and yep. just be horrible, horrible people. Um, and that's nothing new for England, is it? If you think back to things like France 98, when they're on the streets of France, actually smashing the hell out of um, the, the towns in France before the, the World Cup games in 98. And I think any international tournament, we could sit here and go, that happened to every single one. It's, it's not, this, this isn't, it's a different kind now. Before it was smashing up places, yeah. and now it's targeted abuse um, yep. at, our own players, racist abuse at our own players, and oh, beating up opposition fans because they want a game of football, and it's just, yeah. it's, it's just uh, in in, in, th- uh, in thirty years of supporting Norwich club football, um, I've, I've there must be trouble sometimes, but I've not seen any. I've been hundreds of games, home and away, not seen any 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 trouble at all. I've been to see England once. That must have been about 15 years ago. England, Poland, uh, at Old Trafford in Manchester. It was horrendous. I was in a pub and glasses were flying. People were fighting. And there was no Polish people around. It was just English. And that's, that's 15, 20 years ago, maybe. And I've not been to an England game since, just because it felt horrible. So... It's this lad, it's, it's probably lad, 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 yob culture. This hideous, a hideous type of person that unfortunately gets applauded so much in this country because oh they go out on the piss they're proper english lads and it's just oh, it's, not, it's it. not changed since the, i think probably the 1970s this kind of the trouble first started and then yeah through the 80s and 90s it, it picked up a pace and it's just it's just it's not changing it's it's just here it's here to stay and it will just it will change and evolve what kind of unpleasantness and horribleness it, it is um we're giving the wankers too much, uh, too much talk. They're, they're horrible people. Was yeah, go past them, disgusting people. But anyway, that's made me want to um, leave the country. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to try and uh, see what I can do to to move out to another country. Okay, 
That's a positive, positive, positive ending. Yeah. Yeah. Come out. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Now, cable came out of my headphones. But... Okay. Yeah. Um, well, no, that'd be nice to go somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I was thinking, um, yeah, Lincolnshire, Yorkshire, something like that. You know, probably say, somewhere, don't go... um, somewhere exotic. <laughs> don't, go, don't go to Italy. <laughs> um, anyway. Oh. No, well, well done, Italy. You've got lovely people. And well, I mean, one of our favourite people we've met from this year is the wonderful Italian man, um, Danielle Daniel. from Rockin' Box Radio, Joshua Blues Club. Danielle! And Daniel. We, yep. So we, we do love, we love Italy. Anyway, I think we spent far too long there getting angry. Let's, yeah, we did. Let, let's get happy. And I, um, okay, I'm going to go into my feature, Norfolk's Youngest Butcher. All right. Do we need a jingle? Nor- you, do you want to just come up with one on the spot now? Norfolk's youngest butcher. butcher. Yeah. Beautiful. Yep. Good. Like it. Okay. So Norfolk's younger butcher. This this feature came from what I discovered on our email stream the other morning. Um, at about five in the morning, because you're an early riser, you had clearly reg- registered for the Guinness World Book of Records website for mm. some unknown reason. I've not asked the reason why, but I don't want to know. Um, mm. I don't want to know what you discovered at five in the morning. That you thought maybe that's a world record. Um, maybe that is the world's longest or short yeah. hair growth on my toes <laughs> the world's hairiest toes so um, and it made me think that when I was a kid I absolutely loved the Guinness World Book of Records every Christmas that would be my go-to present with the Book of Records and I would be obsessed with reading um, world records I've not looked for any for a bit so I thought as a new feature I could pick out some of my new favourite records just, just to share quickly um, with, with everybody so this one was entitled uh, Talk About Strong Choppers. Talk about George what? Strong Choppers. 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 Um, George Christen from Luxembourg. He ran 38 feet and 8 inches. That's not the record. Whilst carrying a 26-pound table and a 110-pound woman sitting on it. So that's nine and a half stone. George has run. 38 feet and 8 inches carrying 9.5 stone essentially okay, okay. Yeah. in his mouth <laughs> in in Madrid in Spain February the 9th 2008 and um, actually the record was titled longest distance keeping a table lifted with teeth I've got two things I want to point out about this one is that he's from Luxembourg okay yeah. he's, he's gone all the way to Spain to carry a woman on a table with his teeth mm-hmm. If I was going to do a world record like that, I, I would keep it simple. I'd just go out on the street in front of the house um, and do my world record there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about travelling to, to Spain or, or anywhere abroad to go and do that. Nice weather, I suppose. Have you been to Luxembourg? Is it not the kind of place you'd want to do world records? Well, it's not that exciting. Spain's nicer, depending okay. on the part of Spain. Okay, I'll let, that, I'll let that bit go. So... But the title, this world record, okay, is called Longest Distance Keeping a Table Lifted with Teeth. He didn't have to put the woman on it. He didn't have to. He could, if, if he hadn't have put that woman on there, he would have got a lot further than 38 feet and 8 inches. Yeah, so it doesn't say what kind of table either. I think we could do this. This is a record that we could go for. We could use a coffee table uh, made of balsa wood. <laughs> we could... I know we're not very fit, but I think we could run further than 38 feet and 8 inches sure carrying a, a balsa wood table. Um, and I would even go to Luxembourg to do it, to be honest, just to prove that it can be done. <laughs> so, how, uh, would, how would you kind of... Why I don't know how you'd discover that's a kind of a, a skill that you've got, being able to carry a, a table with your teeth. It doesn't seem... When would you start doing that? I don't know. Because this chap, it just, chap had arms and he had hands, and so he could easily have been carrying tables around. But one day he must have thought, my hands are tired. Oh, God, what, what else can I use to carry this woman in this table? You've confirmed that he does actually have hands and arms, yeah? Yes, he does. Yeah, there's a picture of him, um, which okay. obviously we, we can't share on a, do you on a podcast. Suppose, do you think that when he was a little toddler or something, he used to go around chewing things and... Um, he would start chewing at tables and then all of a sudden be able to lift it up and then kind of thought, hmm, I can do something with this. And well, honed his skill until he could run 38 feet or whatever it was. A little surprise for you here. 
Uh, George Christian is actually on the other line. So uh, <laughs> he's not ready. He's not tried, but he wasn't available. He's, he had a mouthful. Um, so that's that's Norfolk's youngest butcher. That's the new feature. There you go. Uh, like it. Like it. Like it. Like well, this can be an ongoing feature because I like it. It's oh, good. good. Yeah. It's got to be better than my last feature, which was the On This Day News article. <laughs> what happened? What happened to like, well, I could only coincidentally find a decent news article on that first day. I've I've been trying ever since, and they're all I've not found one. So um so so if another one turns up, then we'll have we'll have another article. That feature will live on because that was too good a article to to wait. We've got to be able to find ones that can equal the crocodiles falling out of the sky. Mm, the new expression on his face. Bewildered <laughs> crocodiles. Yeah. Hmm. Do you want to tell me? Oh, go on. Do you want me to tell you about um, the person who I've been reading about? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Have you heard of Robert Liston? I feel like him? I have, but I don't think I don't, certainly don't know him personally. It may be a name I've heard of, um, but go on. Born in 1794 mm. in Ecclesmack in Scotland, Robert Liston studied medicine at the University of Edinburgh and quickly became interested in anatomy. He decided mm -hmm. to narrow his focus on surgery and soon gained a reputation as a skilled surgeon. Known as the fastest knife on West End, mm -hmm. Robert Liston was particularly skilled at quick amputations. When, <laughs> when most surgeons at that time lost one in four patients due to his, due to his spill, speed and skill, Liston only lost about one in ten. So that's mm -hmm. pretty good going. Mm -hmm. British surgeon and author Richard Gordon, a noted Liston expert, claims that Liston could perform a leg amputation in two and a half minutes, mm -hmm. at one point even getting it down to 28 seconds. Chopping a leg off, 28 seconds, that's good going. He was so sure of his speed, he became known for his catchphrase uttered before every surgery. Time me, gentlemen, he would say, holding up his knife. Time me. Mm -hmm. And everyone in his ever-growing gallery of onlookers would time him. Due, uh, due to his reputation, he quickly became famous for his work, however. One on one of his surgeries in particular stands out above the rest. Robert Liston was performing a leg amputation on a patient who was lying flat on his table. As he brought down his knife, he was so focused on his speed that he took his surgical assistant's fingers off along no. with the patient's legs. <laughs> As he swung the knife back up, it clipped a spectator's coattails and he collapsed dead. <laughs> the patient and Liston's assistant both died after the wounds became infected and the spectator who collapsed was later discovered to have died of fright. The three deaths made Liston's surgery the only one on record with a 300% mortality rate. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the outcome for him? Was he struck off the, the medical register or...? Well, though the three deaths were by far the most notable of his career, they weren't the only time Liston gained infamy for a less than successful surgery. <laughs> Whilst amputating another patient's leg, he broke his personal record by finishing the surgery in two and a half minutes. However, in the interest of speed, he got a little too excited and chopped off the patient's testicles <laughs> along with his leg. <laughs> <laughs> he also once mistook a lump for a young boy's, in a young boy's neck for a skin tag and removed it suddenly at the boy's home. The lump turned out to be an aneurysm of his carotid, car 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 or something, artery, and the boy died. So, uh, yeah. But years later, when anesthesia was invented, Liston became the first surgeon to operate using it, and his, his surgery was a success. So despite his downfalls, Robert Liston remained a distinguished surgeon. After his death, his peers erected a marble statue in his honour and created an award for students in distinction of his name. No. Just a murderer. Yeah, basically. I imagine I have a three hundred percent mortality rate on a it's, single operation. It's, it's, he is just a murderer. He was messing about with his with yeah. his privileged position with a big knife. He's <laughs> murdered me. some pe he's murdered some people. Time me, time me. Time me, gentlemen. And now he's a hero. Yeah. Amazing. If that, happen, if that happened now, you, you went into the Queen Elizabeth in King's Lynn. Could and, happen. And he he slipped because he was going too quick and, and killed three people in there. Do you think we'd be <laughs> calling him a hero? Testicles as well. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? So that's oh. uh, that's Robert Liston. So I thought uh, 
that was literally the only funny thing that I found when I was researching stuff. But it was, uh, is is good. That's it's a good story. It's a good story. Right, let's have some music. Let's have some music. So it's time for the song off. Um, yeah. I think I'd like to listen to your song first, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. So um, you're not going to tell me anything about it. I'm just going to get it up now and play it in three, two, one, play. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right, yeah. So that, that's one of those songs where you listen to it and go, why didn't I write this? I wish I wrote this. I almost hate it because I wish I wrote it. But actually, I absolutely love that. And I had that coming through my headphones and it was all over the place. So if, if yeah. you listen to this and didn't listen through headphones, go back, rewind a little bit, pop headphones in and listen to where those noises are going. There was noises shooting up my bum and up my nose and all sorts. It was... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely brilliant um i've got no idea what it was though not a clue what that was so that is a song called no girls and it's by suicide cop and um they're from portland in oregon right. and it's from their 2019 self-titled album suicide cop okay so i got to know these after receiving a free download code for their album for Bandcamp from slade yeah. nevin of um captain crook records um who you should definitely follow if you like getting free yeah. weird music because they'll be sending out free codes for every single album they put on constantly. And there's some great, crazy, crazy stuff on there. But yeah, that's Suicide Suicide Cop, who I listened to that album and I was instantly hooked on the whole album because it's a proper lo-fi punk album and it's just yeah. absolutely brilliant. So That is brilliant, yeah. Lo-fi, but I love synth noises as well. I love noises in, 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 well, in punk songs especially as well. Um, so yeah, it just comes out of nowhere, and it's just, oh, that was good. I couldn't find Ooh. much information about him. I even fo- I, I messaged uh, the owner of Captain Crook Records, who is Slade Nevin, mm. and said, uh, what can you tell me about these guys? And he said, in all honesty, I don't know a lot about them. I've got, <laughs> they're just two guys who do a side project called Suicide Cop. There's one photo of them anywhere, and mm. uh, they've released two that album and two EPs on band camp and definitely go check them out it's have you not spoken to them to the band no no yeah when they track uh, them down i um i sent a message but didn't get anything back but so i spoke to him through um uh captain crook records who kind of released it they're not they they do the same kind of thing as socks on uh, so it's not mm-hmm. an actual record label but they just kind of um groups and bands together to try and share some promotion and things like that mm-hmm. But I don't think they promote much because nobody knows anything about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two guys in Portland, Oregon. And, uh, wow. They make crazy songs. Brilliant. Brilliant. Good Go. choice. Like that. 
like that. Oh. Right. You go find mine then. Stick it yep. on. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, go. So, Buddy Christ, what do you think? Oh, I thought that was very sweary. That is very good. I know who that is. Who is that? That's our uh, Brummy Brothers, isn't it? Or Brummy Brother. It is our Brummy Brother. Uh, April, isn't it? So I've, um, I've kept it close to home this week for a change after criticising <laughs> you for the last three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it very close to home. Um, yeah. This is not this is not very close to home. He does not live with me. Um, he's about 15 miles down the road. So that was Call to the Faithful and our good friend Matthew Matty Matt Beard Matthew. on on the singing bits and yeah. his lovely band of merry men playing the instruments. Um, so that is their new single called Animal. Animal, um, a very good band, Animal. aren't they? Very, very, very. Yes. Powerful, isn't it? Good song. Powerful. Good. They are um, in, on, in terms of the instrumental uh, prowess. Um, yeah. They are on a different planet league to us. Um, yeah. They know what to do with their we strings and their sticks. They're, they're very, very good. Yeah. And a bit of I saw them a few weeks ago live, and they've taken a bit of a new direction. And this animal song is a bit of a hint to that. It's it's a bit more. I can't describe music. It's a bit more like that. Yeah, you know remind me of the chorus reminded me a lot of um, a Marilyn Manson type song. His oh, voice okay. sounded quite a bit like him when he starts shouting, and uh, yeah, it, it did it did remind me of Marilyn Manson a bit. There's a few rappy bits in there, which made me think of Beastie Boys as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's bloody cool. And I was listening to that in the car today, and um, I, I started imagining video because I often imagine video ideas. If I was going to make a video, what would I do? Picture this, right? Woman, what's called a Doreen. She, there's no music playing at this point. She walks into her vets. She's got a cat, a long-haired ginger cat, for example, in a basket. 
got it in her hand. She she pops it on the counter like you do with your pet when you go in because you think, do I put it on the floor, on the on the counter? What do I do? So she puts it on the counter anyway. Cat's called Pippin, uh, Dorian and Pippin. Set in the scene, set in the scene. And she said, oh, I've got Pippin here for his injections. Pippin. Oh, nice to see you, Dorian. You'll be all right. Yes, thank you. Are you? Yeah. You busy? Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she, they get signed in and then they, they still no music playing. Um, she goes and then sits down uh, on the in the waiting room. Soon as that cage hits the benches, uh, 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 the chairs, that song starts. Yeah. Camera pans to the animals in the baskets. They're nodding. They're nodding away. You've got a guinea pig. You've got a gerbil. You've got a dog. You've got a hamster. You've got cats. They're all nodding away at the sound of this song. And then yep. they start mouthing the lyrics. That's as far as I got. No, that's beautiful. I like it. It's, um, that Yeah, that would work. I'm sure that would work. Definitely. It's good. But- we were actually talking about Call to the Fable today on a um, bit of a group chat with Neil, weren't we? Neil, um, Neil Saunders. And yes. uh, what I'd said is because we're, we're talking about um, bands, how to get the proper promotion and stuff like that, and how bands become actually from a local band to a to be considered one of the top kind of local bands and then go further from that sort of thing um we were discussing a unnamed band who um i'm not going to say who it is but who clearly spend a lot of money doing what they're doing mm-hmm. and, um they're obviously very good at what they do not my kind of thing um and they but it's clear that a lot of money is spent on them getting where they want to get to mm-hmm. And basically it was saying that in reality they aren't any better at all than Call Hang on a minute, you're not you're not slagging off Call to the Faithful right now, are you not? No, not at all. Band, no, 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 that's not the band you're no. talking about. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Just, no I'm okay. saying that I'm, don't slag my ba- don't slag my band off. I chose this, yes. But there's no need to be slagging them off. Sorry, carry on. What I'm saying is that Call to the Faithful are on equal level with these guys, possibly ah. even better. Mm-hmm. But because they don't sit there and spend all of the money on mm-hmm. on everything, mm-hmm. then unfortunately they might not kind of be seen as mm-hmm. as good as this unnamed band. Who, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm running on probably digging a hole for myself here. But no, it's, it's true. If, it's, if you've yeah. got money, you can purchase all these emails. We constantly get be on this playlist, be on this radio station. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that'll be three hundred quid for yeah. that, please. Exactly. So many of them. If you threw money at those things, you would end up getting on a on a on a playlist of a recognised digital radio station or something, rather than just an internet internet based radio station or, or something like that. So, no money money does talk, doesn't it? And I, I, I caught a little bit of this chat you were having with Neil today. I didn't I didn't get a chance to read it all because um I was actually working, um, yeah. and it, I think I made a comment on there about we're all just playing notes and yeah. and saying words with regards yeah. of who you are. Whether it's one of your heroes like Coldplay, Steve, someone like that, or whether it's whether it's whether it's whether it's, whether it's us, we're yeah. all just plonking on the same old notes yeah. and making words come out of our mouths. But um, yeah, because we're seen as as local, and I know we we use the word we're local. Local bands support local bands, but every band's a local band, really. They're kind of they're local to somewhere. This is yeah. it's a funny term, really. It's, it, at what point does a band become go from a local band to become a a recognised, almost respected band and taken mm-hmm. seriously? Because it's I go back to our past, like Vanilla Pod, for example. They mm-hmm. obviously started off doing the local scene, mm-hmm. and they ended up going worldwide, all over the place. And but that was through gigging and gigging and gigging. Mm-hmm. And, Recording music and selling it at gigs and pure proper hard work. I'm pretty sure they. Well, it's a different time than nowadays. It's completely different to how it was back then. But it's. Um, I'm going on a tangent here, really. Basically, Call the Faithful are a good band. They <laughs> and that's a good song. So, it's uh, yeah, they yeah, should. They're, they're a good proper band that do proper yeah. things, proper good songs. Very talented musicians. Very good songwriters. They're kind of yeah, they're, they're, they're a full package. Um, they're younger and more handsome than we are as well, so they've got that going for them. Yeah, skinnier. Um, yeah, skinnier. Just, yeah. Um, 
better accents, I suppose. The kind of brummy accents make them kind of interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it is a bit more interesting coming from the Midlands than it is from the back back end of Norfolk, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so no, that was that was our two bands for our song off today. Uh, yeah. Mine was called "To the Faithful," and yours was "Remind Me." Suicide Cop. Suicide Cop. Very good songs today, I do think. We've um we've perhaps gone over time here. We 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 have always said we'll stick to half an hour on these podcasts, and I think we have perhaps nearly hit the, the 40, 45 minute mark. So um, so far they've always came out pretty much at thirty seven minutes. Strangely, we just kind of know when thirty seven minutes is up. We know we know we're over thirty seven minutes. I think. Well, probably yeah, not. We probably are now because we're talking about it. We're probably going over thirty-seven minutes. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, I'm done then. I'm off. See you later. <laughs> yeah, catch you later. Bye, bye, bye. Dance, come and chat. Dance, come and chat. Dance, come and chat.